Hi everyone, how's it going? Hope you're doing well since I last talked to you. Um, today I've been out and about in Adelaide and yesterday as well because the weather's been absolutely stunning. 22 and 25 degrees Celsius, sunny, not a cloud in the sky so I thought I'll get out and um, get a bit of exercise and take a few photos, do a few things and so I've put together a bit of a bit of a what I did on the weekend type thing today. Um, I promise uh, no star wipes this time for those that saw the last vlog. Um, I will explain why I'm vlogging at some point soon. Um, at the moment I'm just trying to get better at vlogging and I'll explain it all. Um, for those who've noticed that the YouTube channel has changed names, that might give you an indication of, of what I'm going to be vlogging. Um, big thanks to my workmate Andrew who suggested that name. Do like a good pun. And so, um, I just thought I'd um, put together a few things and see what you think. Enjoy! It's a glorious Saturday here in Adelaide and so I thought instead of just doing a normal bike ride, I'd mix it up by coming down to Port Adelaide and having a look at Wonderwoods where there's a whole pile of buildings that have some great artwork and murals printed on them. So um, I've stopped at one of my favourite cafes in Port Adelaide, Swedish Tarts, um, to sit down and just say hello. And I've taken a whole pile of pictures for you all and I'll talk to you more about them soon. See ya. So throughout Port Adelaide, there's about 80 murals and they've been done by local, national and international street artists. And you can get maps and brochures in, in most of the cafes in Port Adelaide. This is my favourite. I love the fairy wrens. That's been around for a while. Some of them have some meaning. I'm not too sure what they are. I'll try and put a link into um, so that you can see who all the different artists are so that if you do like some of them and you want to see more of their work, you can. Um, I like the yellow and blue in this one. So, yes, yeah, so, um, some are small pieces. Some are um, on the sides of... of buildings like this one and then there's some huge ones there's a couple of huge ones later on i don't know how the buildings get picked but i suppose if you've got a blank space you can sort of get someone to come along and and paint it for you some beautiful colors and it was such a nice day it, it, it made all of the colors pop and i just just rode around as i saw them these are the huge ones so this is i don't know how many stories high this building is and the one on the other side, this one, you can see that for miles away as you're coming into Port Adelaide. So, um, yeah, and even they're looking at like the little siloey or whatever this thing is and putting um, paint on those. And there's some um, that have, have a bit of meaning, there's some comedy ones. Um, yeah, so it's, so it's good to just get around, stop and start and have a look. This one's the Maritime Union, so I, I liked quite apt to that picture with the boat and the um, octopus. So if you get a chance, have a look around. They're easy to spot. So that was Wonder Walls at um, Port Adelaide. Uh, it's a self-guided tour. You can do it um, whenever you like. What I did like about my cycle around Port Adelaide um, yesterday was that um, there were so many community events and community things happening. One of them was a walk against child sex abuse. And um, normally I do like a walk for a cause, um, but I couldn't yesterday, but I did manage to get some um, merchandise and it's upside down. So it's a cool t-shirt, walk against child sexual abuse. So it's a South Australian branch that we're doing the walk and they've got a Facebook page. And so I thought, oh look, this is something I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm interested in making sure we would get awareness out. Um, so yeah, it was good. So I, I encourage everyone to go out and check out your community and um, see what's on. And you never know, you might get a walk or a bit of merchandise and help support some really good causes out there. So Adelaide Zoo recently had three tiger cubs, some March and tiger cubs um, born and we have to wait three months before they can get on um, in the enclosure and that's happened now so um, they're making uh, big news of that 
And so I thought today um, I would go to the zoo. Now normally I'm not a go to the zoo on a sunny Sunday um, in the middle of school holidays because there's a lot of people and a lot of kids there. But this is too good an opportunity to pass up. And um, so I went really, really early, hoping that that, that would avoid um, avoid any crowds. But of course, it's you know, really young ones that get up at six o'clock anyway. So um, there's a lot of people there, but that didn't matter. I was, I was um, quite happy to, to, to get in there. I've been a Zoom member for quite a number of years. So um, normally I would go midweek, but uh, well, it, was, it, was, it was a nice day. Um, I do think that, that when I retire, I want to I wanna volunteer at Adelaide Zoo, but I think I do have to improve my people skills a, a little bit. And one of these ones that I have a real problem, real problem, with the gates. You know the gates to Avery's, there's two gates. So generally you get in one and then you close the door before you open the next one, just in case all the animals come running out. I mean, to me, it, it's, it's fairly, it's a fairly easy rule to, to sort of maintain. But I find I get so frustrated with people. And so I've now taken to giving people the stink eye if they even look like they're going to open the door before the other one's shut. Or I'll um, hold the door <laughs> shut or I just tell them, you can't open that door, this one's still open. And so I think, oh look, I'm, I'm a gate Nazi, which is a really terrible thing. So I might have to work on that. That and my, you know, aversion to children running around the zoo. Anyway, I thought, um, I always love going to see the animals at the zoo and I know that the Adelaide Zoo try really hard to um, keep the animals happy and have um, good enrichment programs and things like that. So I knew it was gonna be fine. I do like the fact that they're really banking on these tiger cups and they've even updated their brochures. So you, you, you get to the zoo, you know, you get one of those, the, the map, um, and a little brochure. Well, on the map, so you've got a little map. I don't know if you can see that. But then, where are the little tigers? They've even put up, have a look at that. They've even put the three tiger cubs in there. So these are fairly new um, maps that they've, they've got to capitalise on those tiger cubs. And I must admit, they were absolutely gorgeous. We did. We did manage to see them when they were doing stuff, so I'm hoping that the footage all turned out and you get to see that. So, um, yeah, enjoy the Adelaide Zoo. The meerkats really respond to a um, camera clip because as soon as I took a photo of this one, it just turned around and looked at me, so I got a nice view of it. And I didn't realise that they had a little baby giraffe at the zoo. I know they've got heaps up at Monato. Some of the little cutie. I love my capybaras. So yeah, so the Adelaide Zoo's doing really well. Um, I don't know when I see the animals pacing like this whether it's because they're not happy or they're just having a good look around. I'm not too sure. This one nearly gave me the slip of the camera. Got it again. I would never have spotted this fennec fox unless someone had told me about it. The cute little thing just poking its little head out. There was another one to the left underneath the heat lamp. Still trying to get a handle on this camera, so I don't know how best to do it without getting the bars in as a close-up. I think I have to read the manual about that one. That's a cute little fennec fox there. Cassowaries. And this is what we're here for, the cute little tiger. Now there were three cubs. I didn't manage to get any footage of the other two. I guess there's always one that's really super brave and happy to get out there and pounce and do stuff. He was really very cute. He was far away, so again, my camera's a bit a little bit shaky. Um, but luckily he was putting on a bit of a show. You see you're getting a bit of the reflection of the glass as well. There was heaps of people around and you always want to try and make sure that you're not sort of hogging the room for the little kids to get in. There was a pigeon in the enclosure and so it's really interesting to see even at three months old the start of this tiger and, and its instincts to, to stalk its prey. So 
cute little tiger cub. I was so happy that I get to, got to saw them. There's me and the Avery's after I'd gone through both gates um, securely and without letting the animals out. There's another meerkat that was eyeballing me as soon as I took a photo of it. It looked very mournful, poor little thing. I saw the um, bird show. So this is the um, free flight bird show. It only goes for about 10 minutes. This was a lovely web that a spider had done. It wasn't a zoo animal, it was just near the bins. And I was just impressed by the web. Again, I don't know what it was with the animals giving me the eyeballs. This tawny frog mouth was very interested in what I was doing, checking me out. This isn't. Um, a zoo animal. This is an ibis or what we call a bin chicken in um, Australia. They're everywhere now. So that was Adelaide Zoo. I tried to take some footage through glass and depending on how the sun was going or how smeary the glass was, it was sometimes a bit difficult. I know glass is, is good because you can see through it if it's not smeary, I don't even know. Is there smear-proof glass that they that they could use at zoos? I'm not too sure. But I found a lot of time I was just, you know, taking footage of myself and my reflection. So uh, anyway, so whilst I was in town, I thought I want I want to go to the botanic gardens. But then I found out there was a bloody teddy bear's picnic. So a whole bunch of people were just going to turn up for a free picnic at the botanic gardens. And that filled me with dread because obviously I've just mentioned that I have a little problem with the public apparently and being nice to people. And so um, I thought, oh, I can't, I can't do it. But I really want to go to Botanic Gardens. And then I found out that it finished at 12 o'clock. And so I thought, well, that'll be fine. I, you know, I'll go to the zoo and then the kids will be all hyped up on sugar and maybe on their downers by then. And they'll all be leaving, so it'll be fine. And it turned out to be a good plan because um, as I was walking to the Botanic Gardens from the zoo, and it's only a short walk, oh, there was people coming out. And there was, <laughs> and you can tell parents have just given up because <laughs> there was this one couple and they're pushing a brand with a couple of kids. And one of the kids is holding into a box of Jesus. <laughs> box of cheeses and I'm thinking oh my god that's not even a kid's snack pack of cheeses it's just here kid just eat it all right and that made me chuckle a bit especially because they were leaving and they weren't going to be anywhere near me so I went in because I wanted to check out um, an exhibition that was happening at um, Botanic Gardens at the moment and it's called the In Seeing the Invisible and it's an augmented reality type um set up where you take your phone and it's an interactive one kilometre trail through the botanic gardens and um, and yeah you, you get to see um, Im imposed artwork um, it, they've done it in other botanic gardens in other countries um, but this is the only one in Australia so I thought oh that'd be good fun it was really weird because we, you're wandering around and you've got a, you've got the little map on your phone and you're trying to get close to, to set off the um, the, the um, point that will, will start your bloody um, artwork and to load it up and there was a lot of us doing that we <laughs> were just sort of <laughs> bumping into one another but oh, you know we, we, we had a we had a good time with that and there was some really good artwork. Um, I tried to get some footage of it. I'm hoping it turned out. I could only um, really get it on my phone. Um, there was some, a lot of them were moving art um, and I tried to take footage of my phone with the camera. I don't know if it really worked out all that well, but it was, it was a really a good way to, to pass an hour and a half because, you know, it's only supposed to be an hour, but by the time you just try and sit there and, and, and walk to where you're supposed to be and then set off the, the um, artwork. Um, and, and there was music to it and everything. It was really good. Um, I suppose it's, it's a bit like people that were playing Pokemon or the short-lived Harry Potter AR game. It was certainly um, good fun and it's there till September and, and self-guided. You just 
download the app, it's easy enough, but it was good fun. It was a beautiful day. I enjoyed it. So a lot of these um, photos are taken from my phone and, um, and you've got the option once you've set off the artwork that you're able to um, then take a screenshot of it. It's at this point of editing that I remember what my friend Leah said about taking photos on your phone and then putting them into your vlog. Make sure you're in landscape mode. So whoops, didn't do that. Some of the artwork you could walk around. This one, as you got closer to it, the bouquet just exploded with a really large noise, which might have made me jump and squeal a little bit. Here's an example of one of the moving pieces and the music that was behind it. I have no idea what's going on here, but it gives you a bit of an idea of, of what some of the pieces are at this exhibition. So of course, if you go to the Botanic Gardens, you then have to take photos of some of the, the standard kind of things that are at the Botanic Gardens, the water lily, the beautiful glass house, the, the bicentennial dome, whatever it's called, conservatory, that's it. And so I've, I've put some photos in as well, just so you can see how pretty our Botanic Gardens are. about it from me that's all I've got to show you so far um, I'm, if I'm not able to put links in during this I will certainly put links in down below to things like Wonderwall so you can see what artists there are um, the Botanic Gardens the Adelaide Zoo that kind of stuff um, if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them down below and we'll see you next time bye